The movie introduces Georgia Bird, a reserved and modest woman living a frugal life in New Orleans. Working as a salesperson in the cookware section of Cragen's department store, she faces constant harassment from her boss despite her diligent efforts. Georgia finds solace in her passion for cooking, often recreating recipes from cooking shows and documenting her creations in a scrapbook labeled Possibilities. She refrains from tasting her dishes, fearing weight gain, but finds fulfillment in capturing photographs of her culinary endeavors. One day, Georgia's boss reprimands her for giving leftover food to beggars, insisting that the store is not a charity. Frustrated, Georgia tosses the store's magazine into the trash, fed up with the pressure at work. Amidst the challenges, Georgia harbors a secret crush on her co-worker Sean Williams, whom she idealizes as her perfect husband. Unbeknownst to her, Sean shares similar feelings towards her. During the Christmas season, Sean follows the aroma of Georgia's cooking and requests a taste. Impressed by her culinary skills, Sean reminisces about his mother's kitchen, sparking a connection between them. As they bond over their conversation, Georgia becomes flustered and accidentally knocks herself unconscious while picking up utensils. In the next scene, Sean rushes Georgia to the health center in their store, where she undergoes a CT scan. Unfortunately, the results are devastating. It reveals that Georgia is actually suffering from terminal brain tumors caused by a rare neurological disorder known as Lampington's disease. The doctor delivers the grim news. She only has three weeks left to live. Georgia is left in a state of shock and disbelief, unable to come to terms with her diagnosis. In addition to her medical prognosis, Georgia faces the daunting reality of having to cover her medical expenses herself, as her HMO plan is insufficient. As night falls, Georgia sits at her dining table in a terrible mood, her appetite gone and her desire to talk to anyone diminished. She reaches for her cherished scrapbook of possibilities, flipping through its pages and feeling the weight of her unfulfilled dreams. Tears fall as she contemplates the unfairness of it all. However, a sense of clarity settles over her, and she realizes that she must accept the reality of her situation. With newfound determination, she resolves to spend her remaining days doing everything she has ever wanted to do. The next day, Georgia marches into her boss's office, determined to quit her job. However, her boss is dismissive and refuses to engage with her, causing her frustration to boil over. In a fit of rage, Georgia grabs her shoe and smashes his phone. She then stands up to him and declares her resignation, despite his efforts to keep her on board by offering a raise. Georgia remains resolute and walks out of the store, ready to pursue her passions. Following this, she heads to the bank to liquidate all of her assets, determined to live the luxurious life she has always wanted. With the clock ticking, she knows that she must make every moment count. Georgia then embarks on her dream vacation at the luxurious Grand Hotel Pup. During her flight, she encounters some inconvenience with the man seated in front of her and expresses her displeasure to a flight attendant. Unable to resolve the situation alone, the flight attendant seeks the help of a senior colleague, who offers Georgia a first-class seat as a solution. She instantly switches to first class, as money isn't an issue for her anymore. There, Georgia gets served with exotic wine and a lavish turkey, indulging in the luxury she has longed for. Upon landing, Georgia waits for a taxi to take her to the hotel, but her impatience leads her to rent a helicopter instead. As she arrives at the hotel, people start to wonder who this important-looking figure is. Walking into the reception to check into her room, she learns that it isn't ready yet, as she arrived earlier than expected. Georgia requests any available room and is offered the presidential suite that costs $4,000 a night. Regardless, she doesn't mind the price and pays for it, attracting more attention to herself. Later, while waiting to be checked into her room, Georgia spots the owner of the store she used to work at, Cragen. She learns from a hotel staff member that Cragen is with his mistress and that they will soon be joined by Louisiana Power broker Senator Dillings and Congressman Stewart. Following her arrival at the luxurious Grand Hotel Pup, Georgia's determination to live the rest of her life to the fullest is apparent as she indulges in a designer wardrobe and takes full advantage of the hotel's spa services. Her sense of adventure leads her to attempt snowboarding and base jumping off a dam, 
all while relishing in the delectable meals prepared by the famous chef Didier. Despite all this, Georgia remains kind-hearted and honest, which is appreciated by the hotel staff, with the exception of the unfriendly guest services manager, Miss Gunther. Meanwhile, back in Georgia's hometown, Sean grows increasingly concerned about her absence and seeks answers from the doctor. The news of her terminal illness comes as a shock to him. Alarmed, Sean goes to her house to check on her but doesn't find her there. Instead, George's nephew approaches him and shows him George's scrapbook, revealing her trip to Europe as well as her feelings for him. With this revelation, Sean becomes more determined to get her back, so he makes the decision to fly to Europe. On the other hand, Cragen and the other influential people are having their dinner when Stuart can't help but notice George's beauty and charm. Intrigued, they decide to approach her and learn more about her. They join her at her table and strike up a conversation. As they chat, Cragen becomes increasingly suspicious of George's motives and wonders if she has any intention of harming his business. However, the others are drawn to her carefree spirit and open nature. They wish to know what it feels like to have a soul. After taking a leisurely walk, Georgia returns to the hotel and encounters Cragen and the rest of the group, who are enjoying a game of chance. They invite her to join them, which she immediately accepts. Georgia even bets a considerable sum of money on the same number three times in a row, despite being unfamiliar with the rules of the game. Surprisingly, her lucky number 17 proves to be auspicious, and she wins all three bets. But instead of feeling elated, she feels angry with God for showing her luck when she only has a short time left to live. Disappointed, she decides to stop playing and cash out all of her chips. With the help of Cragen's assistant, she converts her chips to cash and is astounded to learn that she has won a whopping amount of $100,000. As time passes, Cragen's initial curiosity about Georgia begins to morph into something darker. Jealousy. In an attempt to uncover any potential dirt on her, Cragen bribes the cunning Miss Gunther to snoop through her belongings and gather information about her background. In the next scene, Miss Gunther searches Georgia's hotel suite and comes across a letter that Georgia has written containing instructions for the disposal of her remains after her death. Moved by the letter and touched by Georgia's sunny optimism and self-confidence, Miss Gunther finds herself in a moral dilemma. On the one hand, she has been paid by Cragen to find shady evidence. And on the other hand, she wants Georgia to live out the last days of her life in the happiest way possible. After a bit of thinking, she ultimately decides to confess to Georgia that she has read the letter, urging her to return home and spend her final days with those she loves. Taking Miss Gunther's advice to heart, Georgia sets off for the airport the following day, eager to return home. However, her plans are quickly derailed when she discovers that an avalanche has blocked the road, leaving her stranded in the Czech Republic. Little did Georgia know, Sean is stuck in a taxi on the other side of the snowdrift, unable to reach her. After a while, Georgia returns to the hotel, while Sean abandons the taxi and trudges through the snow on foot to find her. That night, Chef Diddler invites Georgia to assist him in the hotel's kitchen in preparing a luxurious New Year's Eve feast. During the festivities, Diddler publicly acknowledges George's contributions and thanks her. However, Cragen, enraged by the attention Georgia is receiving, seeks to embarrass her in front of his companions by revealing that she is just a saleswoman in one of his stores. Despite his efforts, though, Georgia remains composed and unbothered, stating that she never shared anything about herself and that people simply made assumptions without knowing the facts. She reveals to the group that her illness was the reason behind her extravagant spending and her decision to live life to the fullest. However, Georgia doesn't want to make anyone feel uncomfortable, so she promptly leaves the table after wishing everyone a happy new year. After the commotion ends, Cragen's associates are appalled by his insensitivity and choose to support Georgia, leaving him alone at the table. Following suit, Craig and the secretary also decide to leave him behind. Dejected and embarrassed, Cragen retreats to an upper floor of the hotel and sits on a ledge, contemplating whether to end it all. When Georgia finds out about this, she immediately rushes to the scene to talk him out of it, hoping to change his outlook on life. Georgia reminds him that true happiness comes from being kind and less driven by greed. Back in Louisiana, 
Georgia's doctor discovers that the CT scan that had originally diagnosed Georgia with Lampington's disease was actually incorrect due to a faulty scanner. In reality, she is not terminally ill at all. The doctor is eager to share the good news with Georgia and rushes to find her. Upon arriving at her residence, he meets with her nephew, and they send a fax to the Grand Hotel pup to inform Georgia of the mistake. In the meantime, Sean successfully overcomes the snowdrift and reaches the hotel, where Georgia is perched on the ledge chatting with Cragen. It appears that she has finally convinced him to reconsider his plan. Although the situation is a bit awkward, Sean musters up the courage and confesses his true feelings for her. Georgia happily accepts his proposal, and they embark on their relationship with a passionate kiss. Downstairs in the lobby, Miss Gunther discovers a fax from Georgia's doctor and rushes to deliver the good news to her. When Georgia finally discovers the truth, she screams with happiness along with everyone else. Now with a new outlook on life and determined to pursue their dreams, Georgia and Sean return to Louisiana as a loving couple. Together, they open a restaurant named Georgia's Joint. The restaurant's success attracts the attention of famous chef Emeria Lagos and Chef Diddler, who make an appearance and celebrate Georgia's newfound success. The final scene shows that Georgia has changed her book of possibilities into the book of realities.